Hey, what's up everybody? Digibro here. There's been a few subjects I wanted to talk about on this channel just by myself. Uh, so I thought I'd do like a little solo let's play type thing and uh, to whatever. Wow, that guy just fucking fell. Whatever random. G Jesus, where did this guy come from? Uh, to whatever random game I felt like, and I've been playing a little bit of Dark Souls 2. I fucking hate this game. This is the worst game ever made. It pisses me off to no end. I hate it. Uh, but I've been playing it because I just played through Bloodborne and Dark Souls 1, finally. After fucking four and a half years since Dark Souls came out, I finally beat it. Um, after really loving Bloodborne. In the end, decided I uh, I like uh, I like Bloodborne more than Dark Souls. You won't hear that for a while on the channel because we recorded so far ahead of ourselves. Um, I'm probably gonna release this video the same day as the first episode of Uncharted, which uh, full disclosure spoilers. We only did three episodes of Uncharted, and uh, then we're gonna launch into Fire Emblem: The Sacred Stones because Uncharted did not go very well as a Let's Play show, um, for reasons that will become apparent when the videos come out. But anyways, I, I, um, you know, towards the end of Bloodborne, I was saying that Dark Souls was still the one I liked more, just for, like, uh, mostly artistic reasons. And while I still think that's probably true that Dark Souls is, like, a more artistically cohesive game, um... Bloodborne's mechanics are just so much more satisfying and it's so much more like uh, fun to play and it's beautiful to look at. I love all the environments in that game. Um, you know, I was critical of them before I actually played the game because I felt like the the environments were a little too cluttered and it was hard to tell what was going on. And I think that was, that was very true when I hadn't played it because... Um, uh, the way that Victor and Aaron Hansen of Game Grumps both played, they had already played the game before, and they just kind of like... Oh, I died. Uh, I'm just trying to grind right now, by the way, um, which is why I'm in this area. I've already beat the boss here, which I think is why all these white knight dudes are walking around, which I did not see coming when I decided to choose this place to grind. Because <laughs> these enemies drop a lot of souls, but uh, but fighting like three of them at once is a little much. All right, there's my blood stain. Pick that up. Get the fuck out of here um but yeah i i i played through one in uh dark souls one i played through bloodborne i want to play through um demon souls as well but i have to hook up the ps3 for that and i've been lazy about it but uh i started playing this one and it's just fucking miserable i hate everything about this game i'll probably talk about it at length at some point in the future I've always, like, I've hated watching people play this game, but, you know, just like with, with Bloodborne, I didn't like it as much until I played it myself, so I thought I might as well give Dark Souls 2, you know, the good old college try, give it a shot, and, uh, yeah, I, I pretty much hate its guts. I'm just seeing if there's any secret shit off these cliffs. I, I haven't watched a whole lot of people playing this game. I've watched, uh... Yahtzee and uh, his friend Gabe played through this on their show Let's Drown Out, um, which is where I began to really hate it, and I've watched a little bit of my friends play it, but but not all the way through. Um, but yeah, just all the mechanics feel like shit, and it's, like, it's hard in, in really mean-spirited ways that aren't fun. So anyways, getting to the point... I wanted to talk about some shit, some, uh, some, let's say, loose threads that have been hanging on this channel that I haven't really addressed in a lot of depth. One is, uh, some of you have probably seen the video I did called Digi Has to Win the Game, where I played the game, you have to win the game, and, uh, at the end of the video, I, like, really cryptically say that there was a secret in the video. Now, uh, there were a bunch of people who figured out what the secret was, but funnily enough, there were a lot of comments from people who didn't figure it out, but had their own speculations about what it meant, uh, and they were pretty hilarious, because most of them were totally wrong, um, <laughs> most people had no idea what it was about, and I didn't expect, 
like, I didn't know what to expect when I made the video because the nature of the secret, I'll just explain it uh, in brief. There was an annotation at one point in the video that was very small. Um, I would have made it bigger so that it was easier to spot, but um, the problem is, and I should have done, like, this was a bad experiment for this video in particular because if you click the annotation, it would have taken you to another video where I set a code. Entering that code would have, the video, uh, I don't remember exactly where the annotation, it's around 10 minutes in, um, probably just shy of 10 minutes, but like, uh, the annotation takes you to a video with a code, that code is used to open up a website, then you go through the website and it takes you on, like, basically you're just finding a bunch of codes to go through different layers, and then at the end of it, you would have reached a secret blog, um, uh, where it linked to, it was just like explaining why I did the experiment and linking to the um, the video of me and Victor reacting to the asterisk war that uh, I talked about it at the end of part 7, I believe. So, um, yeah, that's what the secret was. A lot of people had a, a lot of very extreme different interpretations of what they thought it meant, but that's what it actually was. And, uh... Some people made it all the way through that and found their way to the end and commentated on it. But the thing about it is that the the point of it was to test whether or not I would be able to launch an ARG or an alternate reality game, which is basically a type of internet game where you you put out some kind of codes and uh, and it leads people down a rabbit hole to try to find some kind of answer, like uh, like maybe something's at stake like let's say that in in this version of reality victor gets kidnapped and there's like a whole arc uh, of victor getting kidnapped but the the audience has to solve riddles to figure out where he is or something like that you know some weird stuff look into it if you're interested in this concept i'm not explaining it very well but uh the thing is about ARGs that you really have to have, like, a fairly large audience and a certain type of audience, like, the type of audience who's gonna really be, like, critical of, of things they watch or notice things in the stuff they watch, who's going to actually participate in the ARG. If you want to see an example of a failed ARG because the person did not have the right type of audience for it, my good friend Jeff Burgess, or Jeff Rye, as he's called on YouTube, that's R-A-E, um... He had this series, I don't know if it's still up, but he had put out, wow, wow, I just got fucking trashed. Yeah, I've been, tr this, this whole area here is a pain in the ass. I've gotten, like, most of the way through it, I think, but, like, there's just a million enemies here and it's a huge pain. Anyway, Jeff tried to launch an ARG where he put out this video that was, like, just a regular update video, and then at the end of it, he gets, like, kidnapped by some people, and then there's a, uh, there's, like, a code on screen, and if, you know, you were able to solve that code, it would take you to the next stage of the game, and he kept putting out, like, videos of, like, you know, of him in, like, this like garage that he'd been like abducted to and there's like all this stuff going on but no one tried to solve the codes like no one his because jeff is a a a musician and like his audience was like a, you know he's like a brony musician and his audience wasn't that engaged with his content content anyways that they would like understand what was going on you know like most people first of all most people aren't going to click on an update video like if a lot of people might not know this if you're not a YouTuber. YouTubers love the idea of update videos because it's like, oh, I can keep my uh, audience informed of what's going on with me. But when an audience sees update, they will not click it because they know it's not regular content and they don't give a fuck. So your audience never knows what you're up to because if you make an update video and you don't disguise it well, they won't click on it. Which is why I'll, you know, these days I try to give like updates, like different titles or like if it's for this channel, you know, if you look at the really old um, videos on this channel, there was an update I did like really early on and you know, not a lot of people watched it. So now I hide them like this video you're watching right now, which is essentially an update video, but it's disguised as just me playing Dark Souls 2. You clicked on it because it actually looks like the real regular content of the channel, but I can also do an update in the same form. So not a lot of people clicked on it because it was an update video, and then people didn't really, who did watch the video, didn't understand what was going on. Probably a lot of them weren't watching the video, they were probably listening to it. So at the part where he got kidnapped, 
people weren't actually paying attention to the screen and didn't know what was going on. And then just the type of audience he had wasn't really the type who's like going around cracking codes and stuff and trying to figure shit out, you know, where like ARGs are often taken up by websites like 4chan where people are really into like that kind of like mysterious internet shit, you know, or just, just it wasn't the right type of audience. So it completely fell apart. So I wanted to see if the audience I have for Digibros in particular, because Digibros is a channel that we're like, there's not a lot of viewers, but all the viewers are guaranteed. Like there's always going to be about 300 views per video and it's pretty much always the same people. And from what I understand from like, you know, reading comments and stuff that you guys leave, uh, probably a bit less than half of you actually do watch all the videos. Like you never just uh, listen to them. And there's other people who just listen. Um, but I also think that that depends on the game, how exciting it is, who's on the show, you know. Fewer people watch if it's just me, fewer people will watch if it's a boring looking game. So, uh, you know, in the case of you have to win the game, there was probably not going to be a huge amount of viewing retention. So, ideally what I would have done, and if I wanted to actually launch an ARG, this is what I would do, and I knew this already, um, you know, I would launch it through a high profile video where basically I'd make a video where it would be like, you know, maybe the next Evangelion video, something I know that everyone's going to watch. And at some point in the video, there would just be like a weird backwards audio part, you know, something that like is really jarring and gets your attention for a second. And, you know, maybe 75% of the people who watch the video wouldn't pay any attention to that and would just, you know, like, not wonder what it is. But the people who would, would then, you know, try to figure out what that code means and they'd end up going down this whole rabbit hole. Um, so that's the ideal way to launch an ARG out of a YouTube video. But I wanted to see if I could do that on a small scale. If even just one person would click, you know, like, if I put an annotation at a random point in the video will at least one person find the code and, you know, continue down this this rabbit hole. Um, but again, the problem is that I, I, I put it in a video that I didn't really think a lot of people would actually, like, visually watch, you know. I, I figured most people would just listen to it. And uh, so I put in a line where I said, hey, there's a secret in this video. Now... If I hadn't done that, I would have put a much bigger annotation and it probably would have worked closer to how I, you know, intended it to where people would, uh, you know, see the annotation and, and maybe like only one guy would find it, you know. But because I said that, I made the annotation a lot smaller so it would be more of a challenge to figure out what the hell I was talking about. Um, but this led to the issue that... Uh, instead of it being something that people just found, it was something that people rewatched the video over and over again trying to find, which I didn't expect. I didn't know how much people would care. I didn't know if people would just be like, yeah, what the fuck ever, I don't give a fuck, you know? Um, or if they'd actually, like, you know, try to seek it out. So that video hilariously has one of the most view counts of any Digibros episode just because people were trying to find the secret and kept rewatching it again and again, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, and I didn't see it coming, and I definitely didn't expect people to read so deeply into it and, like, try to come up with their own meanings for what I was trying to say was the secret uh, of the video. But, um... Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting to see. The data I got was not necess. What the fuck, man? It's so fucking. <sighs> I hate this fucking game. The fucking endurance in this game is bullshit. It's just broken as fuck. Um. Anyways. Yeah. Uh. It was it wasn't quite the right data because of the way I organized it. Not really being the uh, the ideal way. But at least I do think that, you know, there's enough viewers of my shit that, that people, there's people who are curious, people who understand the idea of the codes, you know, because like while the trail was pretty obvious, like once you found the annotation, everything after that was pretty easy to figure out. It was just like a bunch of pretty obvious like links and codes. But um, I just wanted to see if my audience is the type who would solve it, you know, um, like with Jeff's ARG, even I 
couldn't solve what he was doing. Like, he would put these codes up, but it was, like, a little too esoteric, and I didn't really get it. So I, I still to this day don't really know what the end state was for that thing that he was doing. Um, I should ask him sometime. But, oh my god, fucking damn it. I hate this fucking, fucking bullshit so much. Uh... But yeah, I, I still don't know what it was, what what he was doing. So that's all it was. It was just an experiment to see um, to see who would click on a who would click on links and follow instructions. And so in the future, I am pretty confident because like I think with my with my real videos, like you know my mainline content, people do watch the videos, and I do think I have the kind of audience who would uh, would follow the path as long as the early part is sort of easy. You know, I think with an ARG. A big part of it is getting people invested, getting them curious, you know, where if you if you start off too hard, then people won't get where it's going or they won't care that much. Whereas if you, you know, rope them in with some puzzles that they understand and then make things get more complicated, just like any video game, you know, it's, a, it's called an alternate reality game for a reason. And I attacked at the wrong time. Every fucking enemy in this game has tracking where, like, they start to swing, but then they won't, like, they, they keep following your location until they swing. Like, in Dark Souls, the, the one of the best strategies is to fake out your enemies, to get close to them, and then they start to swing, and then you back away. But in, or you, you run around them to the right and then, you know, fucking hit them. But in this game, enemies always fucking track onto exactly where you are. And there's also no sensation of getting hit for some reason. So when an enemy fucking hits you like that guy did, I, I didn't even realize that he had hit me at first and that I'd lost any life because he fucking, it didn't look like he hit me and it didn't feel like he hit me. This game is fucking bullshit! God damn it. Fucking hate this game so much. It's the worst fucking game. And I'm just getting angrier and it's making me worse. Anyway. I want to break this fucking controller in half. Uh, so that's the first update. Now, the next thing I wanted to go on is a rant that probably no one but me cares about. Uh, oh my god, that guy despawned. I've actually died so many... I've heard about this feature in this game. That if you die enough times, it starts despawning certain enemies. And I think, or, or, or it might not even be if you die enough, it's if you kill them enough. Because it, it wants to prevent you from, like, grinding too much, I guess. Which is insane to me. Like, this this whole game is full of ways to fuck you over where, like, there's there's no way to make this game easy for yourself. Like, in, in Dark Souls and Bloodborne, if you just, if you tried hard enough, if you learned it well enough... That you could you could make it so like it's easier to get through this game. It, there's a million stats that you have to upgrade. You know the la the other two games I upgraded strength, vitality, endurance. This game there's like six fucking stats I have to upgrade, and yet it doesn't want me to grind. It's fucking ridiculous. So anyways, the subject I wanted to rant about. There's a a point in the a few points in our Bloodborne playthrough where I went on these long rants about how I think that Bloodborne is like Dark Souls meets Devil May Cry, and Victor just had no idea what I was on about. And some of the commenters were like, you know, were like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude? This game's nothing like Devil May Cry," and it was driving me insane because I was like arguing with Victor to the point of shouting matches about how. I think the game is similar to Devil May Cry, and he doesn't think so at all, and I was trying to get my point across. So finally, I had to I had to go outside, take a breather, figure out my thoughts, and figure out how to present this idea to Victor. So I wanted to do it for you guys, too. If for anyone who didn't understand why I think Bloodborne is like Devil May Cry, I'm going to explain it. So, from the beginning, we have to talk about two different genres of video games. Action games and RPG games, right? RPG games basically come from tabletop games. They're very stat-focused. You know, they're all about, uh... They're all about, um... Numbers and and uh, and running those numbers against each other and they're all about leveling up, you know, increasing your stats and 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 generally, yeah, getting getting stronger via via level ups. Then you got action games and action games are all about your basic skills, right? Action games kind of evolved from like 
from the basic shit like platformers. Like, you know, they it, it's all about spatial um, spatial management between you and the enemy. Oh my god, I thought he was dead. What the fuck? Why did he survive? He never survives. He never survives two heavy hits, and that time he survived. <sighs> I hate this fucking game. I'm only getting worse. This is the worst part. I guess because I'm talking. So anyway, yeah, you know, you got you got games that are about action, games that are about stats. Well, then you got action RPGs, which combine both, right? And you got your 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 action RPGs that are more in the vein of like Zelda, which some people wouldn't consider Zelda an action RPG. It it's not exactly stat based; it's more equipment based. But you know, there's games that are similar to it that are more action RPG, like Soul Blazer, which I've played on this show before. You know, you 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 fight by positioning yourself in relationship to the enemy, but your your level of damage that you do is based on stats that you gain from, you know, killing enough enemies and leveling up. So that's where you get action RPG. And most action RPGs are still very RPG. Like, they're more based on stats, more based on that than, than the actual combat. Like, the spatial relation shit isn't that big of a deal, right? Now, Dark Souls comes pretty close to be... Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, action games, for a long time, were, were pretty basic, right? Like, it's, it's either you attack the enemies... They were usually, like, action platformers or action adventure games, you know, like, uh, say, Banjo-Kazooie. You know, you do attack enemies, but mostly it's an adventure game where you collect shit. Um, and so... Springing out of action-adventure games, we started to get stuff like uh, survival horror games like Resident Evil, right? Where there's like a... There's more movement mechanics and stuff like that, more action mechanics that um, that are meant to limit you. But eventually, we I think there's a, a new genre of action game was created with Devil May Cry called The Spectacle Fighter. This is a game where... It, it's sort of like, almost like a fighting game, right? Where fighting games are all spatial coordination, all spatial awareness. But most fighting games were two-dimensional, or they're just, you know, one versus one. They don't have a lot of overlap with, like, adventure games. Well, if you combined the action-adventure genre and the fighting game genre, where you incorporated, you know, more, more move sets, more parries and dodges and all that good shit, all the stuff that makes fighting games what they are, and you combine that with action adventures, you get Spectacle Fighters, right? And you get Devil May Cry. This game that took the mechanics of Resident Evil, because it was originally supposed to be Resident Evil 3, it took, like, the camera, the, the layout of the world, it was this big castle that you would venture through, but it made it into an action game with, like, a, with, like, a fighting game level of, of, uh, of attacks, right? And then that genre keeps evolving. And by the time you get to Metal, uh, Devil May Cry 3, it's like this unbelievably expansive combat system that's like nothing in any other game, right? And so, like, it's it's this whole other world of action game. It's, this, it's, it's an action game where it's got, like, the moveset of a fighting game. So then you get Dark Souls later down the line. And Dark Souls, or Demon Souls, rather, like, you know, being the first one... Um, Demon Souls kind of took action RPGs and made the action more like a spectacle fighter where spatial relationship is a huge deal where like you know your stats can carry you to some distance but you can play through a Souls game at level 1 you can just be purely skilled you can just dodge just hack and slash just you know attack the enemy and and win but like the numbers game is is still very much there. You know, you still you still got to level up your strength and stuff and if you don't then you're going to be like piss weak. It's going to take you 9 fucking years to fight anything. Um, which some people do. Some people play soul level 1 runs of of Dark Souls and Demon Souls and and all the Souls games, you know. Um but like when you play it that way, it's no longer really an RPG because the stats on yourself at least don't matter you know it's you're basically just playing an action game that doesn't even have any upgrades to your skill set so yeah it, it's like 
like they combined the the natures of these two games. So then you get Bloodborne and Bloodborne takes it to another level where like in Dark Souls there's still like a heavy element of uh of role playing where like there's a lot of different classes you can play or a lot of different like builds you can do, right? There's there's tons and tons of weapons in the game, tons of different ways you can play, different ways you can interact with the environment. Um you know, and, and each one is, is subtly different in how your attacks work and everything. But it, it still feels very pen and paper, Dungeons and Dragons, but on a, in, a, in a way that you interact with it like an action game. But Bloodborne is, like, so action-focused that they, they narrow down the number of weapons. You know, that his, your repertoire of weapons in Bloodborne, before the DLC at least, wasn't even really bigger than Dante's like Dante had uh probably seven maybe weapons in like Devil May Cry 3 you know he's got a he's got a decent arsenal and in Bloodborne you you don't you don't get that many you know most people use one throughout the whole game it's much more about your move sets what attacks does this uh does this weapon have? What are the what's the range of motion that I have? How do I set myself up in relationship to the enemy? You know, and the setting feels more Devil May Cry as well because it's like all these castles, all this gothic look. There's you know this this feeling of like being a badass, which is what Devil May Cry is about. Devil May Cry is about feeling like a badass. It's about your character being this trench coat wearing crazy fucking flippy guy who's like a badass and he kills a lot of dudes you know and in bloodborne the whole game much more so than the other souls games is about feeling like a badass like in the souls games it was all about like earning that feeling right like in dark souls and demon souls the game had this oppressive depressing atmosphere where it felt like death was around every corner and you were really fucked unless you learned your way around the game but then once you learned you got that feeling of accomplishment because you beat it and you were like oh my god i can't believe i actually fucking did it you know i can't believe i made it through i survived this gauntlet this onslaught of enemies i learned my way through i learned all the information i needed to know and now i'm a fucking expert you know that was sort of the the idea the, the meta of the game that was what made it fun and bloodborne instead of being like that is more like you're you're kind of a badass from the start you look awesome you're a trench coat wearing you know like bad dude with a flowing cape behind you all of your outfits flow all of your weapons feel cool all of your attacks look and feel cool you're like this much stronger dude and like it's really easy to get your stats up to maximum in Bloodborne. Like, there's there's so much less focus on the stats, where in, in Dark Souls, you really needed to come up with, like, a specific build and, like, really work towards it. In Bloodborne, it's just, like, level up your basic shit, get super overpowered, get your so fucking weapon big, and then beat everything to death, you know? Grinding is easier, uh, exploring is easier, and it's just, it's a lot more focused on the combat, you know? So... I think that when I say that it's like Devil May Cry, what I mean is that it's from that kind of lineage where, like, uh, you know, it doesn't... I would certainly say it feels more like Devil May Cry than Diablo, which is, like, a standard action RPG, you know, like, the kind of thing that most people think of when they think of an RPG. I would definitely say it's 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 more like that than, um, you know, than a lot of games. And I think people cling to like when, when you compare stuff and this is especially true with like video games and shit and with gamers whenever i make a basic comparison people are like well it's not exactly the same and it's like well no shit like if it was exactly the same it would literally be devil may cry i'm not saying that the game is literally devil may cry what i'm saying is that the lineage it belongs to shares a lot with devil may cry perhaps more so than with an action RPG, whereas a game like Demon Souls or Dark Souls feels very action RPG. It still feels very stat driven. You know, this game feels very stat driven to an extent that is obnoxious. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's what I mean when I say that it's like Devil May Cry. And hopefully that I have now drilled that into your head and you get it. If you didn't already from the beginning, you know, surely someone did. Because not that many people complained about it. But, uh, 
Yeah, I, I think um, I've had a lot of conversations with my friend the Devu about how I guess I tend to view everything in this very like broad social context. Like when I make comparisons with things, I always make comparisons in like a really broad way that's like taking into account the whole history of the thing whereas most people more concern themselves with like the the immediacy like like when i say dark souls is like uh or when i say bloodborne is like devil may cry most people aren't thinking that i mean on a on a like scale like a like a spectrum of all games they're just comparing the two games directly and being like these are not the same you know whereas i'm thinking of it in terms of like if you drew a giant spectrum from spectacle fighter to puzzle game, Bloodborne would fall much closer onto the spectacle fighter side than, you know, than the other side. So like that's uh that's what I mean by that. Um and hopefully some people get that. Ah, uh, okay. I think I'm done with that explanation. Was there anything else I wanted to talk about in this update? Hate Dark Souls 2. I think I've covered that pretty thoroughly just you guys have just watched us play bloodborne just look at the animations in this and how like there's no like weight to my character he's just like walking or she's just like walking like in, in in bloodborne and dark souls you have like this heft your your body really shakes side to side when you run you feel like everything's like like you're you're, you're fucking this uh, and this is just like gliding gliding my, my animations don't make any sense in dark souls you had like this big wind up on your attacks and then like you would you would attack and then you could like roll right afterwards but in this game you like attack and you're kind of like delayed for a second like i hit circle twice there and it didn't do anything because i was delayed it's weird like why put the delay after the attack as opposed to before the attack because when it's before the attack then i really have to worry about where I am in relation to the enemy and now instead I have to just like like attack and then manically hope that I fucking finish my animation in time to escape somehow and it, enemies attack fucking constantly you can only ever get like one hit in on a lot of enemies because they'll attack you five fucking times in a row because their animations just instantly restart oh god everything's so fucking infuriating in this game I hate it it's a piece of shit. I'm probably not going to beat this game because I hate it. Because it's not satisfying. I mean, you've, you've been watching me just run through this village so many times that enemies are despawning before my eyes. I've, I've seen at least three enemies disappear since I started recording this. And, uh... That is just a fucking... a mess. Um... Back to Digibros news. We might be going back to two shows at a time soon. Um, we talked about... Because we were saying before we started Bloodborne that, like, you know, we don't know whether or not Victor's going to go off to school because he's, you know, he's applied for grad school and should hopefully be going to grad school um, by summertime or at least knowing where he's going to go. We really have no idea, like, when he could possibly be leaving. Like, if it'll even be this year. We really don't know. Um, we won't know until we know what schools he gets into, what regulations they have for how long you have to live there and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, we really don't know. But, like, we were saying that we would probably do Bloodborne and then the Sword Art Online games and then uh, move on from there. But, uh, and we, we'll talk about this in, I think, one of the other videos, like, that we looked at the Sword Art Online games, and they didn't actually look that funny. Like, at least, we didn't look at Lost Song, because that one's too expensive, which is why we haven't bought it, because it's, like, $60, and I don't want to pay that much for a joke. And then Rehollow Fragment, which is, like, the adaptation of the PS Vita game for the PS4, uh, just looks boring. Like, it doesn't look funny, it just looks really slow and boring and grindy it looks like an mmo that's not an mmo so we looked at it and we were like yeah maybe this isn't worth it you know this might not be funny enough to be actually a good show so we uh we gave up on that we tried uncharted it didn't turn out very well we only got three episodes out of it um and we started up fire emblem the sacred stones which we recorded five episodes of. I don't know if Victor wants to keep doing it on the show because he started playing it on his own because he remembered how much he loved the game and just started playing it uh, on the on the Wii U. So I have no idea 
if that will be a long-lived series or if it was just the five videos we've recorded, but um, we were having a great time with it. I also don't know if it'll be entertaining, but um, in the meantime, there may be more of these videos of just me playing. What the fuck was that? The fire just stayed there? What the fuck was that? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna have a fucking... I'm gonna have a fucking hernia. I'm gonna have a migraine heart attack. I'm gonna have all the body... All the ways that my body could shut down. It's gonna do all of them at once. Look at this shit. Every time you die, your health bar gets reduced until it's at half. So you're even shittier every time you run through. You are worse. You can't even get... Like, I was getting much farther than this before because I had way more health. And now I die in two fucking hits from one fucking fireball. Oh my god, I'm so mad. And I've gr I've grinded, like, look at this. I mean, I haven't been playing that long, but I'm already level 43. But because you have to level up vigor and endurance and vitality and strength and fucking adaptability in order to be fucking useful, then you have to grind constantly, yet they despawn enemies and don't give you enough fucking souls to level yourself. I just, I, uh, I can't. That's it, guys. Next time on Digi Bros, uh, I don't know what, but I hate this fucking game. I quit.